Now, as cooking royalty, as you are often referred to, I'm sorry if you hate <laughs> that tagline. I'm not yes, I have had it before, yes. You have had the privilege of sampling some of the world's best, but also the worst dishes. Uh, can you think of the best dish that you have ever tasted? Is there a dish that Gosh. sticks out for you? <clears throat> it, it, it really depends on the, on the minute of the hour of, of, of the uh, day of the month of the year, but... On the whole, I love going to places like Thailand and mm -hmm. it, it's dishes. For me, the food on the street gets me more excited. I can't bear, I like a lot of Michelin food, but I can't bear those Michelin restaurants that my wife calls clink clink restaurants. Everyone's so scared. What does she call them? Clink clink. Oh. <laughs> because the only noise you hear is a clink yeah. of, of, of knife or fork on, on porcelain. Very, very stifled sort and of atmosphere. everyone's okay. sat there and they're scared of the, of, of the smelly and they're scared of, you know, every time you try and eat some ridiculous thing with a smear or a towel or some sort of rubbish like that, just as you're about to start talking to your friend, someone comes and explains what you just ordered. Hmm. You know, and you have 42 different courses. Now they can do it very well, like the Fat Duck in Melbourne, or, or you know, there are all sorts of incredible sepia, incredible restaurants in the UK and across the world. But I want to be on the street among the diesel fumes and the fag smoke on a wobbly plastic, still <laughs> shoving my face with delicious chilies, whether I'm in Mexico or um, Thailand. That's the food, that has a pure edge and, and rawness and, and that makes me really excited and, and happy, that sort of food. Fantastic, and can you think about the worst dish that you've ever oh, tasted? Oh, I wrote a book. Surely that's easier. That's much easier. I wrote a book a few years ago called The Year of Eating Danger Scene. It was about going around the world and eating the strangest food and it wasn't again wagging my finger, it was about culinary relativism and trying to say that children who've grown up in Laos eating deep fried bee pupae, the same as us growing up eating Smarties or M&Ms or whatever it is, it's all, it's all relative. But I remember in Laos, in I think I was in Luang Prabang, um, and I was having lunch with a family and they brought out the salad and it was like a cold tripe salad and tripe's okay if it's cooked so you know sort of uh, cat cow tummy and but this was raw tripe and Ooh. basically I ran out of water halfway through it and it was like sort of uh, bovine chewing gum and it was chewing and it just wouldn't go down and then various insects and um, dog soup I was never a fan of that and listen I'm not in <laughs> any way saying that, that, that we should we should eat dog of course we shouldn't it was horrible but I felt that, you know, if I eat chicken, if I eat you mm -hmm. know, um, um, beef and all the rest of it, I should at least try it. It was horrible. I'd never eat it again. And never I'm a again. big fan of dogs. Not cooked, obviously, you know, alive. And the pet dead. variety. Oh, the pet <laughs> variety. But that was pretty low. But again, it was, you know, it's about we grew up in a certain way and see foods in one way. And, and you grew up in a different culture. And again, what you like and dislike is very different. But yeah. raw tripe salad was pretty rubbish. That sounds terrific. So I'm really interested in, as a food critic, what's going through your mind as you enter a restaurant? Have you sort of got a bit of a routine? Um, are, you, are you sort of judging the minute you set foot inside that restaurant? What goes through your mind? Well, it's, 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 there's, walk, there's a great restaurant critic, um, Australian restaurant critic, um, who used to work in the UK. And there's a poster of him as you walk through Sydney Airport, and he's called Terry Durack, and he's a pretty nice man, he's a mate. And it says, when, I go, when, when you read my review, I want you to feel that you're sitting in the restaurant with me. And I thought, that's spot on, because that's exactly what we all strive for, whether you're Adrian A.A. Gill or Giles Corrin or Faye Masher. What you want to do is take the reader in with you. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just about the food. I've eaten some pretty average food in restaurants that for lots of reasons were wonderful because we were friends and there was really good wine, the service was nice, and I've eaten some fantastic food in sterile sort of mausoleums mm. that, that I wouldn't want to go back to. So my main thing is, number one, will the reader like it? Number two, would I want to go back? So all those factors come in. I still do try and find good in it. I, I, I see myself as a sort of optimist rather than pessimist. I don't go looking to put the boot in because I've got so many friends who are restaurateurs, mm -hmm. I know how much hard work it is. And going back to the hot plate, the work that goes in to running around, everyone thinks, oh, you're gonna open a restaurant, get your mates in, yeah, get on the wines, have a nice time, free food, party, party. It is not, you have to be a businessman, a diplomat, a, a, a food expert, all these things together. You work the hours where all your friends oh, yeah. are, are coming out and having a nice time. You know, Scotty and every other chef has worked those dark and dank hours, you know, for 10, 20 years. And there's an idea that with Gordon or Marco or whoever it is, Heston, that you could just sort of put your whites on, swan into a kitchen and become a big rich celebrity and go around the world and in a private jet. Like All of those guys mm -hmm. have done 20, 25 years. Yeah. Hard graft, being shouted at, it's, back, you know, it's a hard, tough life. And you know, these guys, all the restaurants in the hot plate, they've worked incredibly hard to get where they are and it would be churlish and it would be stupid to, to just go in and start saying, oh, you know, you, you have to appreciate, I think, as a critic, how much hard work goes into a restaurant mm. and how much they've given up to make a successful or even an unsuccessful one. It's a hell of a hard trade.